Max speaking in fronting right now for the Court of Consciousness system. Um, today is our birthday. Our body is physically 24 years old today. And um, that's awesome. We just got back from a wonderful and eventful day with our partner and our friend. And um, I wanted to talk in this video about something I've been thinking about recently about um, sort of like the overlap between spirituality, creativity, um, cults, and uh, shifting. I wanted to specifically talk about something that's been happening lately uh, with one a few of our alters, including me, Max, uh, the one I'm currently speaking. Um, so we do consider a significant portion of the uh, reality shifting community to be an actual cult, to be a, a so the difference between a, a spiritual belief and a cult is there's a few, there's a few important differences, but um, when it gets into cult territory is when people are either incapable or unwilling to listen to different perspectives or deny outright science, deny outright facts in favor of pseudoscience and in favor of things that are not what they are being presented as. And we were in 2022 really, really obsessed and very deep into reality shifting in a very self-destructive and dangerous way. Um, and specifically, we fell into what is called, uh, well, first I have to say, what, what is reality shifting? Reality shifting and shifters are, and there's different forms of it, but the form of it I was in, the like part of it I was in, came out of the pandemic, the stress of the pandemic. And it was a belief system that taught young people, including myself at that time, that you can physically leave your reality and project your mind into another reality and live there instead of instead of this one and the reason that it that was extremely destructive was because around 2022 i was actually having undiagnosed symptoms of severe ptsd and also dissociative identity dis dissociative identity disorder. And I didn't know I had either of those things. And it was also the year I was disowned um, through a text by a narcissistic family member. And the belief in reality shifting that you can just physically escape to another world and you don't have to be here was extremely appealing to me because my reality was excruciatingly, hellishly painful to the point of physically also being painful from the level of stress that our system and our body was undergoing. And we were having essentially nightly physically intensive panic attacks that felt like heart attacks that made us genuinely and sincerely believe we were dying. That's how, that's how much pain our body was in. We masked it incredibly well and we always mask our pain really well. But, um, we got into reality shifting because we wanted to escape, not just wanted to escape, we needed to escape an, an unbearable uh, environment and relationships that were destroying our life. The primary one being the narcissistic abusive parent who disowned us around then. And so the idea of shifting provided a sort of escape from that, where we were trying at that time to escape to the video game Half-Life 2, but specifically to escape to the character, the G-Man from Half-Life 2 and Half-Life 1, because that video game character to us at that time represented um, kind of a, a, an escape from an impossible battle or like fighting and overcoming an impossible battle. Our opinion on the G-Man from Half-Life is that they, some people say they're the God of those video games. Like there's a theory about that. We actually think that it's more complicated. We think they're actually the Grim Reaper of the Half-Life universe, but not just the Grim Reaper of the Half-Life universe. We think they are, um, we, we think the Vortigaunts in the Half-Life universe are like Jinn, are, are, are comparable not just to Jinn, but also to angels. And that the G-Man is sort of like a, 
a savior figure for Gordon Freeman, that Gordon Freeman himself is actually a savior figure, but that the G-Man seems evil, but is not, is actually helping Gordon. And when we were playing the games, you know, it might sound weird, but we kind of fell in love with the G-Man, like over the course of playing Half-Life and Half-Life 2. And we would keep, we kept replaying the games because those video games were helping us to escape um, from our pain, it was helping us to like, I don't know how to explain, but it was like playing a, a really disturbing war game, war games, was helping us cope with our PTSD, with our undiagnosed PTSD, because those games, it felt like what was happening in my life symbolically, like sim all the symbolism in those games, it felt exactly like was, what was happening in my life, but in a different way, if that makes sense. And so I, I got into shifting to try and shift to the G-Man from Half-Life. And what, what happened was I did, <laughs> I did actually, uh, like, you know, I did shift uh, a few times. I, there was one time in particular that was the most vivid. And I also got a temporary headmate that was, uh, which is in dissociative identity disorder, you can like split off parts of your brain when you have this disorder and they become like real people for you who sort of just live with you in your day-to-day -day life and take care of you um, where other people have failed to, to help that person. It's a, a trauma-based disorder similar to PTSD and it is something that can only develop in childhood, uh, from childhood trauma, repeated childhood hood trauma and so we had like stuff going on where we like shifted to see the g-man from half-life and we were also kind of in love with him and wanted him to save us <laughs> essentially and like help us and protect us from the abuse we were experiencing in our life and then eventually um, we stumbled upon a YouTuber who goes by the name of, I think, Daniel Love, but it's Lucid Dreaming Portal. And that YouTuber had a video that literally saved us from the shifting cult. They had a video that not only talked about and debunked a lot of the most popular claims from the shifting cult, but also talked about why it's so dangerous and destructive in a way that really just sort of woke us up and was like, holy shit, I need to get the fuck out of here because this is like this, this is actually really, really dangerous for me. And not only was I was I like really obsessed with shifting, I was obsessed with um, respawning, which was the idea. Respawning was the was not just shifting, not just the belief that you're physically going to another reality, right? Respawning was the idea that you could die to reach your desired reality, that you could physically leave this reality to le to get to your desired reality, right? And so. Yeah, that's the one we wanted to do. We wanted to like die and like live with with the G-Man in like a heaven-like place where they could take care of us and like help us. Like it was really bad. <laughs> and then um, after learning about lucid dreaming, I realized that some of what people are calling shifting is literally just lucid dreaming and people are not willing to accept that because they're not willing to see it in a different way. And it's really frustrating and really dangerous and problematic. And it's also like people talk about like astral projection. They insist that lucid dreaming and astral projection are not the same thing when there is literally no substantial evidence to support that claim. And it's like, the thing is like, I am a literal wizard. Like our system is a wizard. We practice witchcraft, we do magic, but any anything we're doing, we can make like a significant claim for and provide evidence for that is like actually verifiable or like you can see where, where it's coming from and like how we reached that conclusion. Whereas the things people point to is like, I think there was some like CIA report or something from like the 80s or 90s that people say proves manifestation and proves shifting and all this shit. And it doesn't. It fucking doesn't, actually. And it's like, have these people even like read what their their claiming does? Because like when you actually look at it, it doesn't actually prove any of that. And also the CSIA or whatever fucking group they're pointing to, CIA or I don't even know whichever group they're, they're saying, is not a scientific organization. And I'm not saying something has to be scientific to be true, right? Because I don't believe that either. I'm a witch. I don't believe that something has to be scientific to have a real or significant impact in someone's life or to be real. I believe in gods. I believe in God. I believe in spirits. I actually consider our DID headmates spirits. And, but it's like, there has to be a fucking line somewhere. And when you're literally teaching people that they can like die and escape all their problems and just go to some other reality, as is in the case with respawning some type of shifting, that's really fucking problematic. That's really fucking dangerous to a lot of people. And it really fucked me up. 
It really did it. It fucked me up. But part of the problem is lately we've been kind of like craving it again, right? Like as harmful and as destructive and as horrible as it was for our health and for our life, we've been craving sort of that like shifting escape lately. And one of the problems we have is that the shifting cult is one of the few um, spiritual communities or like spiritual escapist communities that we know of that actually willingly and knowingly bridges the gap between fantasy and um, between like fantasy and spirituality specifically, where it's, it's merging the two very directly. And that's part of the problem is like, we still do that all the fucking time with our witchcraft, with being DID, with being autistic, with other things, like our brain naturally does that. And it makes us a more powerful magician as well. And we're aware of how we're doing it, but it's frustrating when I want that. And I want that aspect of like merging fantasy and spirituality, which is something I already do, but I can't find that in that escape without it involving all this other fucking unnecessary bullshit that is extremely harmful to people like me, to people with PTSD, to people with dissociative disorders and other shit. And that's who this crap is appealing to. It's appealing to young, vulnerable people with undiagnosed PTSD or undiagnosed dissociative tendencies who are sometimes destroying their lives trying to escape to another place because they can't physically escape an abusive environment or abusive people. And that's the fucking problem. And that's also the problem with a lot of other like spirituality stuff. Cause it's like, I am highly spiritual and I love my spirituality. I self built my spirituality in a lot of ways. And I love my spirituality. I love my spirits. I love witchcraft, but you have to do it mindfully and you have to do it carefully. And all of this stuff is so fucking manipulative and damaging to a lot of people. And I know I'm not the only person who has had this experience. So I wanted to share this. And I guess like hear from other people who have survived this or like gotten out of this, if you found an alternative, if you found an alternative that works for you. Because part of the problem was when I was doing lucid dreaming, having dissociative identity disorder was a huge fucking barrier for me being able to make good progress with lucid dreaming, because I did have some. But what would happen was I would make progress with one alter and then I'd switch and I'd have to redo everything. So it wasn't just one person learning to lucid dream. It was like 10 fucking different people trying to force ourselves to focus on lucid dreaming and doing it. And then every step of the way, it being like this huge fucking fight with our own brain to stay being able to like just that little bit of progress. It was like one step forward, 10 steps backward. And it was like, we got really into that for a while, but eventually we had to give up for our health because it became sort of just as destructive as, not, not just as destructive, but it did become bad for our health in a similar way that shifting had. So now we're just trying to do like immersive daydreaming, right? Where you're daydreaming mindfully and it feels real, but you also understand that you're not actually leaving anywhere. You're going inside of yourself or inside of your own brain in a way that feels real. Cause that's fucking safer. And also it's the same fucking thing. It is, but the people just don't want to like, anyway. And it's like, I also in November, cause part of the other reason I stopped trying to lucid dream was in November, I escaped an in-person religious cult. Cause me and our system and our partner had been indoctrinated into a sun worshiping cult over the course of 2023, which was, was really fucking frustrating because I'm not going to go into it, but I also escaped an in-person cult in 2023. And so a lot, a lot of fucking shit. And, and and all this shit I've mentioned from like 2022, 2023, 2023 was the best year of my life. Unironically, I lost like four fucking friends to transphobia and ableism in 2023. And despite that, and despite being financially taken advantage of for months by a former roommate, being lied to and manipulated and harmed by so many fucking different people and other shit that was going on, it was the best year of my life specifically because the narcissist who had been controlling me for like my entire fucking life before that year was no longer in contact with me. And... <laughs> Like them leaving my life and disowning me was the only good thing they have ever fucking done for me. 
And it was the only good thing that has actually led to my life genuinely improving and my health and happiness genuinely and significantly improving. And so it's like, <sighs> I'm trying to find myself, right? And I feel like we found a lot of ourselves more so than a lot of people have at our age of, of 24 years physically. And we know ourselves really fucking well. And we're, fr pr frankly, you know, I'm not boasting here. We are a damn good witch. We are a really good wizard. We're, we're a, a skilled occultist. We've taken our craft very seriously and made huge strides and huge improvements over the course of 2023. And I feel like that shows in our life and it shows in um, what we've been able to build for ourselves from learning about ourselves and using that to empower ourselves. But it's also like, sometimes I do just want to fucking escape. And it's not even like there's necessarily anything going on physically or, or at all. It's just that I'm so tired and exhausted from like so many years of, of just bullshit that even though I'm out of the bullshit now, I want something to like, I don't know, like latch on to, to help alleviate the stress in my body right and so i feel like shifting is is not what what is going to give me that and realistically i should probably still stay away from it and i know that and yet i'm craving it and that's not good and i don't i i, I can't explain that but it's like i know this thing fucking hurt me but i miss it <laughs> And so I'm thinking if I just get into like meditation and like mindfulness or like if I meditate on like what people call their like desired reality, but understanding that it's not that it's no, that it's not like an actual place I'm going to outside of myself. It's a place I'm going to inside of myself to have a real experience. And if I do it with that, I feel like I could do it safely or I could find a way to do it safely. And it's just... There's, I, I don't know if this makes sense. I think this will make sense to the right people who see this, but it's hard. It's fucking hard when you've been raised in an extremely harmful way. And then to get away from that, you try and do the opposite, right? So like I was raised for most of my life strictly anti-theist, but specifically I was raised to believe that who I am does not exist. And I'm not like being fetishious or, or anything. Anytime who I actually am, like the mask or whatever would like slip just a little bit, I would be punished. Sometimes literally beat by one of my caretakers pre-age 10 and different shit. Cause I, like when I was displaying my natural self or when my alters were making themselves known, any time growing up, we were essentially taught to hide as much as we possibly fucking could for our own survival. And so now being like semi-physically safe and no longer around people who are like controlling us and shit, trying to find like who we are, I feel like we have, but it's also like, something, something inside isn't right. And I don't know what it is. And I don't, and I know that, you know, in time we'll continue healing and we'll continue doing what we need to do and we'll, we'll get through this. But it's like, I just like, I, I guess I just want that comfort that comes with the, that comes with the realization, that comes with the dissociation, that comes with all these things I can't turn off anyway, that I'm going to be living with either way for the rest of my life. But I might as well try and use it to make something fun for myself that can like give me that comfort. But I also don't want to do it in the way that the shifting community taught me how to, because I feel like all of that shit was so dangerous and no one talks about it. Or they do, but they do it in a way that is super fucking ableist. And I am disabled. I'm not for ableism. Um, and there's nothing wrong with being mentally ill, especially when a lot of people's invisible disabilities were given to them by other people. No one really talks about that either. And everyone thinks they're a disabled ally when they're they're really not. A, 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 I mean, disabled person's ally, ally to disabled people, but most people fucking aren't. 
and the casual ableism in a lot of shit is really harmful and it's also harmful to people who like want something more and and can make that for themselves but are like told oh well if you're doing that you're just whatever and it's like i i just need something <laughs> you know and it's also like i i feel like there's nothing really wrong with like having a coping strategy right i don't feel like it it's it's about the excess of it it's about how much there is because like a cope any coping any fucking coping strategy can become destructive right but anyways it's my birthday i had a really good birthday i had a really good time with people who actually love me who actually love my system who actually care about us and have been there for us for for over the course of 2024 right now 2023 and even before then uh, a bit have been with me for and have stuck with me and ha have showed me what actual love is what actual friendship is and have taught me all the shit my li my life lacked before and i feel like that's really wonderful and glorious and we are so thankful for that um and i guess i wanted to make this video as like kind of an update like where we're at right now but also to see like if anyone has ideas of like how do you non-destructively bridge the gap between fantasy and spirituality and still have the experience of going to another place where it feels real without that, without it being lucid dreaming necessarily, and also without it being like shifting where they're believing that you're actually going to another reality or something like wh where is the middle ground and how do I find that? And I guess, um, yeah, I guess I, I've been sort of, like, being a DID system already is in that middle ground. But, yeah, I guess I just wanted to make this update. Um, Max signing off.